I quit social media for a month as someone who does social media management. Why did I do it? How did it go? And what are my plans for using social media in the future after this digital detox? Make sure you subscribe to consider checking out my Patreon. Let's get started. First, why did I get off social media? It's mainly because I started reading this book called Digital Minimalism by Cal Newport. The book is basically a crusade against all things online and social media, at least from a productivity standpoint. And while I don't agree with everything it recommends, here's the actionable stuff that I'm applying to my life. First, the author recommends you take a 30-day digital detox. Cut out all unnecessary social media activities and spend time on more meaningful things. Stuff like learning new skills, engaging in deeper socialization beyond hitting liking or writing comments on social media. The main point is to rediscover your life outside of social media. While you're on this detox, the next step is to develop an action plan for how you're going to reintegrate social media into your life in a more controlled, intentional way. The author strongly advises that you build systems to basically allow people to contact you without social media whatsoever. I disagree with that because it's simply not realistic to expect everyone in your life to go out of their way to contact you outside of social media. It's not feasible for most people. But in any case, it's about making a specific plan for how you use social media in the future. Like for example, I only check Twitter on Wednesdays and Sundays after I finished my work. And to cap it all off, Cal Newport also recommends taking occasional long-term breaks from social media, like for a few days or for a week per month. Like occasional no phone weekends, things like that. Again, I don't agree with everything he says in the book because it's simply not realistic for most people to completely cut themselves out from social media. Yes, your mental health would probably improve if you cut out social media entirely, but your mental health would also deteriorate if you lose the ability to actually form real connection with people. And currently, most plans are made on social media. I keep up with a lot of my friends using social media to make real life plans with social media. I don't agree that it's feasible or recommendable to completely cut out social media from your life, but I do agree that spending far less time on social media and being far more intentional with how you use it is something that can benefit just about everyone. So I did the detox. My main reason for this detox was to regain time and energy for the things that I want to do in my life. So here are the exact rules that I followed for my personal digital detox. My rules may be a bit less strict than others because I do use social media for work, as in I make content on YouTube. But in any case, here's what I did. First, absolutely no Twitter. Instagram, Reddit, or TikTok. The only exception is if I'm doing research for a job interview or for a potential client that I'm looking to pitch my freelance services to. And given I still need to promote my videos somewhere, I used Buffer to post to Twitter without actually interfacing with the website itself. And I was also allowed to go on TikTok if it was for the sake of uploading my own videos. I also more or less set no restrictions on YouTube other than deleting the app from my phone. I consider YouTube to be more like television than I consider it to be social media. So while I did try to use it less, I didn't have strict restrictions on it, given it's literally the main thing that I'm doing with my life right now, making content on YouTube. <laughs> camera switching be like, given that so much of my life as a Gen Z boy is digital, I am Gen Z. I'm just on the old end of Gen Z. At first, I definitely did feel like I was missing out. Stuff like seeing my friends life updates on Twitter. But not to crap on my friends in any way, I realized that most of that stuff didn't matter. One thing that really stuck out to me in digital minimalism, Cal Newport says that low grade social interaction on social media, stuff like liking people's posts, reading their life updates, giving little comments here and there, these make you feel like you have a relationship with a person, and to an extent you do. You are getting updates about that person's life, you are having mutual interest about what each other have to say, but it's a very shallow level of connection. Liking somebody's post on Instagram and commenting on it isn't as deep of a connection as messaging them privately one-on-one. -on -one. And that's still not the same degree as doing like a phone call, which is still not the same degree as seeing someone in real life. The shallow communication that social media provides isn't bad in and of itself, but it does prevent a lot of people from pursuing deeper connection with their friends. If we feel like by watching somebody's Instagram story we're caught up with their life, why would we contact them to ask them about their life? This isn't to say that I'm suddenly contacting all my friends right away instead of using social media. That's my challenge for February on rekindling old connections. But given how shallow social media is in terms of the communication it provides, after about a week I really stopped feeling like I was missing out on anything. I still had
Discord. I still had texting. I still had Facebook Messenger. I still have that to connect with the millennials and parents in my life. But the point is, I had many methods to contact people without spending time on Twitter and ending up wasting hours at a time because I went down a rabbit hole. And with all this time off social media, my mental health definitely improved. Not like some gigantic transformative change, but maybe like 10, 15% better. And this is because I wasn't constantly seeing the worst news the world had to offer, the worst influencer drama, or the worst self-esteem hits by constantly comparing myself to other people by watching their social media feeds. And yet I was still quite informed about the goings on of the world. Stay in focus. I watched people like Philip DeFranco and I was quite filled in, as he would say. And watching a 15 minute video each day about current events is a far better use of my time than spending three hours going down the rabbit hole of Twitter to get the same amount of information. And with all that said, I was still only a little bit more productive as before, on average. In my very first week of my digital detox, I was motivated and excited. I made six videos in one week and like 12 or 13 TikToks. However, since I still permit myself to use YouTube because I viewed it as television more than social media, I did spend a lot more time on YouTube than I would like given it was a digital detox month. On top of that, for like the first two thirds of the month, I would constantly just take out my phone, open random apps, go back and forth between apps because like that was my mind's wiring of me going back and forth between Twitter, Reddit, and Instagram when I'm bored. But that mindless app checking did disappear by the end of the month. I have re-downloaded most social media apps back to my phone and I'm not mindlessly going through them. And that's honestly the main result I was looking for with this digital detox. You don't get to look at my face. What's next, Andy? <laughs> First and most obviously, I am setting the intention to use social media less. I don't have my specific action plan figured out yet, especially given I kind of need to know at an intuitive level how social media works for my career. But the main two things I plan on doing are setting specific times when I can check social media mindlessly, like, like maybe a 15 to 20 minute window in the evenings every day. And I will also focus on connecting with friends beyond just engaging with their social posts. Again, I don't have the specific rules figured out, and over the last few days, there have been moments where I've fallen down social media rabbit holes for like 20 or 30 minutes at a time, so I really should figure those out. So over the next few days, I will figure out those rules and I'll post about them on my YouTube page, as well as maybe make a little video update on Patreon. Patreon.com slash Andy Cormier. But my career is online and I really can't escape that right now. That said, I definitely don't need to check Twitter every every single day, and I could definitely spend less time on YouTube. My second big takeaway from this is that given I work in social media, I should always be treating my social media usage with intentionality. When I get my next social media job, I will have to spend a lot of time on social media. Thus, based on what I've learned, if you are a social media manager or a content creator who uses social media a lot, here are some ground rules for how you can be more intentional with how you use social media. Let's go. First, checking social media is not productivity. It may be a job function of your social media manager job, and it may be vital for your ability to network as a creator, so it can really feel productive to constantly be checking your social media notifications and messages. But if you wait for an hour, those notifications and messages will still be there. Number two, I reiterate, Notifications and messages will still be there later if you don't check them now. Notifications want your attention now, but they'll still be there later. Let's think about it mathematically. You could check your notifications once every two hours and clear 20 notifications in 15 minutes. Or you could spend an hour continuously looking at social media and waiting for people to reply to your things, and maybe clear one notification per three minutes. One of those is much more efficient than the other, so I highly recommend that you batch your notification checking if you have to check a lot of notifications in your life. A good way to do that batching is number three, set specific times for your social media usage. Instead of checking social media several times per hour whenever you think about needing to check it, maybe use like a Pomodoro timer to do focused work and then during your break, check social media. Or in your calendar or something like that, set specific times during the day when you allow yourself to mindlessly scroll social media. Nobody expects instant responses from most brands. So if you're a social media manager, don't put that pressure on you yourself. And most people don't even expect creators to reply to their messages, so don't put that pressure on yourself either. If your career does involve social media, it is important to be on social media, but you don't need to live on social media. I'm a fan of setting like maybe 5 to 15 minutes per hour. For example, maybe 50 minutes of focused work and 10 minutes of social media checking, or maybe 15 to 30 minutes per two hours. Maybe 90 minutes of focused work and then 30 minutes of checking social media notifications. This is specifically for social media 
managers who need to be checking the notifications frequently. If you're a regular person who doesn't need to do that for your job, do it less, maybe once or twice a day. A good way to check social media less is number four, Disable all push notifications from social media. Yes, even messages. And do that for most apps while you're at it. If you have the plan of intentionally checking your social media once every hour or two, you don't need the apps to tell you when you should be checking it. You don't need reminders to do so while you're trying to focus. In my two years managing Avermedia social media accounts, there was never an emergency that couldn't have waited at least an hour. Granted, I set really poor boundaries for myself, so I didn't wait. But my obsessive checking of social media notifications was unhealthy healthy and unproductive. And that's a major reason why I'm making this video to prevent myself from doing it again and helping other people not go down that unproductive, unhealthy rabbit hole. Speaking of boundaries, number five, set boundaries. Don't check work social media outside of work hours. And for people who don't work in social media, don't check social media other than the times you plan to check it a few times throughout the day. Confession time. At my last job, I had my company's social media pages open in like five to seven tabs all day, even when I wasn't working. It is atrocious for your work-life balance and mental health to do something like that. Even when I was doing my own things outside of work and work hours, my obsessive notification checking monkey mind kept wanting to check those notifications even at 9 p.m. on Saturday. Sometimes social media managers do need to do things at weird hours. But that should not be the norm, or your norm for that matter. Set boundaries and have a life outside of social media. If you're a creator, have a life out of being a creator. That'll make the things you create that much more interesting with far more life experience to draw from. Social media and making content are my job and they are things that I do enjoy, but it's dangerous to mix a job function with a personal enjoyment function. The, the old adage of love what you do and never work a day in your life is total BS. Yes, it can turn work into something that you really enjoy enjoy doing, but it can also make things you enjoy doing feel like work and thus you lose the enjoyment. Set boundaries. Last on this list is verbally setting an intention before you check social media for any reason. Mindless browsing of social media can be really bad for your mental health and productivity. During my detox, I started working on building a freelance social media marketing business, and I had to check social media to do research. Like I would look at a local business's Instagram to sort of get a feeling for what they're doing. I set the intention to research a particular business's social media presence and nothing else. And that's exactly what I did. I didn't even check my messages or notifications because the whole point of the detox was not to check those. So if you're not doing a detox, you can be a little bit more practical with your intentions. Maybe I will clear notifications and respond to messages and nothing else. Maybe I will research this popular hashtag. Maybe I will set a 15 minute timer to mindlessly browse and I will enjoy it, but stop after the timer ends. Intentionality is the key that holds everything else I'm recommending together. Social media can be productively used with limited and strong intentionality. Setting specific times to check social media and disabling push notifications help you stop unintentional mindless usage. Setting boundaries and being intentional can be really hard, but these practices can help you get all the upsides of using social media while mitigating the downsides almost entirely. And I think that's worth the effort. How do you use social media? You don't need to go through the extremes of a digital detox to be more intentional with how you use it. And frankly, I think the people who benefit most from using social media less and more intentionally are social media managers, as well as content creators. Whether you work in social media, make content or not, everyone can benefit by being more intentional with how they use social media. If you're interested in more videos waxing on philosophical, I recommend you watch my video on how not to forget your life. It's not just journaling. Also, check out my Patreon. It's pretty cool. And you get to support me. Otherwise, leave a like, subscribe for more, comment what step you will take to improve your relationship with social media, watch that video next, and I will see you next time. Happy creating!